Would you like a desert house design that you could use for either a village transformation or a standalone house? Small footprint, everything you need, I'll show you how. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamance, in my small house tutorial series. In this series, we make a small house, not a tiny house, but a small house, but styled to different biomes. And today, it is the turn of the desert. We are gonna do a desert house, and we're gonna do it as we normally do, on the fly. No planning, we're gonna pick a palette, and we're just gonna go and do it together. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you do hit that like button. And if you've not done it already, hit the sub button as well, because it really helps out the channel. Let's have a crack at this. I'm gonna do a little template on the floor, and then we're gonna go for it. So I reckon we're gonna go for this. It's like an oddly shaped duck with some sticky out bits all over it. And that is gonna be our desert house. Obviously, we'll have some stuff on the outside too. This is the palette that I'm gonna have a little play with. Now, it may not just be this palette. I don't know where we're going, but we've got the sandstoney blocks. We've got some acacia, which works really well with sandstone. And then we've got other things like some banners, some carpets, some dirt, some various workstations, and obviously a bed. Let's find out what we end up with. I think we're gonna make the primary block in this build the smooth sandstone block because it works really well. Obviously, it's sandy, it's in a desert. So I'm just gonna do a row all the way around with this smooth sandstone block first of all. And then we're gonna start to punch things out of it as we start to build the rest of the house. So let's go all the way around here. And I think what we'll do is we'll pop the door right there that works beautifully and then we can just get rid of that one and now i'm going to come up another couple of layers so that shows us exactly where our door is going to be and it also means we can start to think about windows as well so i'm going to pop in a window there i'm also going to pop in a window there and a window if you have that two come into like that there i'll have another window Hmm, where should we put it? Let's put a window there and a window there and we'll have another window right in the middle, a small one right there, I think. I'll miss out windows on that back one and I'm not gonna do windows there because I've got something else that I'm gonna do with it. We now need to put another layer on. So it's now four high and that's gonna be big enough for us to be able to start playing with it. I'm gonna bring in some acacia logs and I'm gonna make legs on all of these purple blocks here just to pinpoint the outside of these walls with acacia. Now quite often with a house, you would do some cross struts, but I'm not gonna do that with this at the moment, but I might move on to those cross struts in a little bit. What I am gonna do, however, is try and get myself in some steps to go up to this level here, this fourth level, and I'm gonna use stone. And we're gonna go stone there, and then we're gonna bring in some blocks to hold that stone then some more blocks to hold out some more stone. And then finally, one last lot of blocks that hold out that last bit of stone there. And that means that we've got steps up to that level that come directly in line with that post, which is what I'm after. I'm then just gonna fill this in. Remember to always kill the wandering con man because you don't want him in your life. What a useless mob this fella is. Go on, run away, run away. We are gonna floor this entire fella out with acacia planks. So let's get these all the way across. We're also gonna pop one in there and we may even put a back door around this side as well. So let's pop that out and pop one there too. And that can be our back door. What I also wanna do is pop some accentuation blocks in here, which is these stripped acacia woods. And we're just gonna randomly pop a few of these in and around the entire floor just to give it a much nicer feel. Makes it look a little bit more rugged as well. We're also gonna build up a second floor and we're gonna start it on this level here. I know that looks a bit weird, we'll do something with that in a minute. And we're just gonna pull these all the way across like that. And then here, we're gonna keep that level like that and then we're gonna keep it open all the way across because this is where we're gonna end up bringing our stairs up for this level. So let's just finish this floor off. Stairs are gonna go in right here, not against the wall, but against the next one, and that gives us a little bit of space here. So I need to just pop those there like that, and then we can create steps that come there, and then go backwards and forwards to create an elevation that goes up to the second floor. 
Now we've got that floor in, we're gonna come up another four levels on this larger square. We're not gonna come up four around this bit or around this bit as they're gonna be outside areas, but we are gonna create ourselves an arch that will go across to them that is three high like that. And then we're gonna carry on all the way around so this wall is four high. Now we've got what looks like just an horrible big cube, so we're gonna try and make it slightly less horrible and big by pumping out some windows in line where the previous windows are. We are actually gonna fix that window up there, pop that window like that, and hopefully we'll end up with something that doesn't look quite so cubic. That can go there, that can go there maybe. No, we're gonna close that off. I think we'll keep that like that. That's looking much better. Now what we need to do is bring up these wooden posts so they are the entire height of the house on these four corners. We are gonna create some crenellations around these sides here using this cut sandstone. And we're gonna put a whole cut sandstone on the corner and in the middle like that. So you can see it'll go on that corner as well. And then in between, we're putting a cut sandstone slab that gives a nice crenellated effect exactly like that. We're gonna do exactly the same on this corner here. There, that goes like that, that goes like that, that goes like that. And then we put a slab in the middle and that creates it's not so much a castle as it is a desert house. So that is what we're gonna echo on the top here when we actually get to it. We've expanded out these windows on the front so they're three wide and then popped another one window above the door. I think that looks better. Before we do anything else, I wanna sort out the sides of these steps because that just looks horrible. So we're gonna come up three, two, and then one, and we're gonna do exactly the same on the other side as well because that could end up being really spawnable and annoying. And then I think I'm gonna get a slab and I'm gonna put a slab on each one of those. There, 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 and there. And that then acts as a non-spawnable area because all these steps are not spawnable. These slabs are not spawnable. We can then do ourselves a trim that comes around at this level all the way around the house. And it gives a nice split and it will more importantly give a really nice split on that large box area that we've got here that is currently just one up and down bit of smooth sandstone and that just won't do at all. So let's get ourselves that all the way across and then we're gonna have a bit of a play with it in terms of patterning. But that is a really good start. What we're now gonna do is we're gonna get some steps and we're gonna do an interchange pattern of steps like this and I hope this works, it should. Yes, it does. So you can see we've got that quite nice, almost upside down crenellation on these walls. Let's do that all the way around. We've repeated that all the way around and then we've gone up to the other level and repeated it again at the top of the house. And you can see we're starting to get a little bit more separation now. I've also brought in this log from the bottom to the top right here because this needed squaring off. And as a result, I've moved that door across just one block. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these blocks here in exactly the same way as I did here, and I'm gonna make a crenellation around the top. And now, it looks a little bit castle-like, but houses in the desert don't need a pitched roof because there's no rain, and that's why you have a pitched roof, so we've got a nice flat one. We're gonna repeat the same ceiling pattern here with these slabs, top slabs, and then we're gonna create an entrance to this roof area using a ladder because we've not got that much space, so straight up and down is probably our best bet. The roof is on, we've got a ladder in that corner there, and we just need to create a little bit of security by narrowing that one off, and we're gonna pop a door in there. The doors we're gonna use are, unsurprisingly, acacia doors, and we're gonna do those from the inside one, two and around here three three doors in and we are good to go what we do need to do is still sort out that area there get ourselves a little bit of light and a bit of decoration in sort the windows and make sure that we've got plenty of decoration everywhere else because it's a desert house you want it really cool so rather than using glass that's going to keep the heat in we're going to use fence posts and that's going to allow that heat to escape so you don't melt whilst you're inside the house now it's starting to look like a desert adobe, but I wanna take some of the squareness off of this. So I'm just gonna use some pop-outs on the edges of all of these blocks here. Now I appreciate that we've not got cross struts going across, but if you can imagine, these have been carved out. So these are cross struts that have been carved. So these pop-outs do make sense. So let's get all of these on both levels. 
we've put a stone button on the end of each of those pop outs and you can see it really softens up that squareness it's not quite so cubic anymore and that makes it much nicer we're also going to put some coverings over these windows because the sun coming down onto the windows is going to make it very hot inside so it needs some kind of shade and we're going to do that across all of them so the shade is over all of those windows using those spruce trap doors and we're using acacia gates just to look as a support. Now often you can use fence posts here but I think with the fence posts in the windows it's better to use the gates, it gives for a better shape. And then on the bottom we've used some acacia upside down steps just to give a bit of a window sill. So we're not doing it on the top because that could be quite overpowering with these wraparounds that we've already got there. I've added a little bit of light in using these lanterns. On the lower level, we're hanging the lanterns directly from that pop out because it would just be dropping too low. However, on the higher level, I've put in a chain just to give it a little bit of extra length. It also means that we've got a slight differential in the way the bottom and the top looks, which just drags the eye away from it being quite so cubic here. Now what we're going to do is a little bit more structure around here and we're going to use the campfire. I love the campfire, it is a great block and actually I don't normally use it very much for campfires because it's got so much other utility. We're going to create a roof by putting in a load of lit campfires across here, even across the pop outs so as it creates a square and then we're going to get a spade and we're going to put all of these fires out. If you don't know, right clicking on a campfire with a spade in 116 puts it out and you get this really nice looking wooden veranda style roof. Then we're going to grab some sandstone wall and we're going to pop one there, one directly underneath it and then some acacia fence spanning between the two and that acts as the support for that corner. We're now going to work on the upper roof. These acacia posts are on each corner three high and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an acacia fence gate and I'm going to shift click them all across the edge of this front like this. This is a bit tricky and fiddly but once you've got the first row in it's not so bad. Exactly like that and then we're going to come around behind and we're going to do exactly the same but including this side here with a fence gate. Shift click all the way across so as they're all facing in the same direction and cover the entire roof with these. So you've got a completed roof there. However, these do look like they're a little bit floaty and you can avoid that by using the opening on them. It just stops them looking quite so floaty. Just like that. But we're not gonna leave them like that because it still looks a little bit floaty. We're gonna get ourselves some carpet, two different colors and you can use whatever colors you'd like for these. I'm gonna use white and red specifically. And we're gonna create stripes across here just by pressing on top of there and then shift clicking on top of the gates a bit of carpet. Red first and then next to the red, white. Now that looks fab but what we've got there is relatively open front and we need to close that off a little bit because it wouldn't be left like that. These would drape over the top, it's far too square and the way to do that is to use a banner of the same colour as the wool and just drape it across on those sides like that, come around the other side here and do exactly the same and then finish it off with white also. And that gives whoever's living in this house a nice cool area to sit out on top of their roof. Just to finish off these bare acacia logs, we're gonna pop in an acacia trap door on top. It gives a nice little bit of extra texture, a little bit of extra height and makes for a nice detail. Buttons always work beautifully to give a little bit of extra depth and texture to some of these woods. They act as pins holding the house together. Acacia buttons on acacia logs work very, very well because the colour is so contrasting but yet complementary. So I'm just going to do that all the way around, only on the lower level. I'm just going to bring a little bit of extra texture into these walls. I'm not going to put too much on, but I'm going to bring in a little bit of standard sandstone just to give it a little bit of a rougher edge. I think it makes for a better look than this very smooth wall. I'm not, not going to do too much on the upper level, just a little bit, but it's enough just to draw the eye away. Time to get some decoration in now, and we're going to use composters and barrels to give a bit of a planter look across the entire build. So just putting in the odd composter here, there, a bit of a barrel there, making sure that it's facing in the right direction. Another composter there perhaps. And on top of those, we're gonna put some bushes. 
we're using acacia leaves here again just to keep in keeping with the rest of the build and it's a slightly different color to the oak leaves that I would normally use but it does bring a nice green effect into the build. I'm also going to add just a little bit of green across these tops here and allow them to flow down onto the ground because that gives a bit of an overgrown feel and also like it's being a little bit more lived in almost a Mediterranean style desert. And you can see that makes quite a significant difference to the entire building. We've come inside the house now and we've put an edge in all the way around the underside of this upper roof. Remember this was an upper slab so we've got a lower slab going all the way around. That covers up that strange bit that we had here if you remember that's outside like that. Just pop those back and it also means that we can pop acacia fence into the corners like this without them just sitting there in a floaty way which just looks weird i'm not going to put one in that corner we put one there and there though and then we're going to get our lantern and we're going to place a lantern dangling from each of those as well they're in the corners so they're out of the way but it also does mean that we've got a decent amount of light inside the house and we're not going to get any mobs spawning we can now start to decorate this fella up with various different workstations etc and also get a bed in so i'll be back when i've done that Coming inside, you can see we've got some storage. We've got a little bit of decoration, but not too much. This is a relatively simple house. We've got a nice working area here with most of the workstations you could need. A little bit more storage on the other side. And then as you come up into the bedroom, again, some more storage, a little bit more decoration. Up on the very top of the roof, we've got a nice seating area out there where they can come and have a little drink. And then down on the outside here, we have got a nice veranda area underneath where they're sitting again and an entranceway that's nicely decorated up so all we need to do now is just do a little bit more of the surround we've created a fairly basic desert house but it's in keeping with the biome that it's in it will keep you cool during those hot desert days it's got a little bit of a farm out the front some pathway and a nice step to go up to an upper area it's got three stories with the top story being somewhere you could sit in the shade from that hot desert sun. Everything you could possibly need inside, including workstations, beds, storage, and it has a really small footprint. You could definitely use this as a village transformation in a desert biome, or maybe as a standalone house right in the middle of the sand. I reckon this desert house would stop any nomad from his wanderings to settle down right in the middle of the desert. It's got everything you could possibly need, and I'm really pleased with the way that it came out. If you like it, please do let me know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying them and I will keep on making them. And also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.